The extreme urbanism studios, they look at South Asia, uh, they look at cities of different sizes. This year we chose the city of Agra, which has a population of a little over 1.4 million. So it's not a mega city, but it's a landscape with an incredibly powerful cultural landscape with heritage building, monuments, the Taj Mahal. But it's also one of the poorest cities in India. And what has occurred here is that communities and the people of Agra don't really benefit uh, from the income that the monuments generate. And so the studio has really tried to look at how one can connect the monuments back into the lives of the people for them to benefit from the economies that are generated around these monuments. When we think of Agra, we think of the Taj Mahal and this powerful icon has reduced visitation to Agra into a kind of one-liner. This doesn't benefit the economy of the city and the people of Agra because you hardly have any overnight stays, but also money doesn't come into the economy. The Taj Mahal is a waterfront monument and it's situated on a river. But like the Taj, there were 44 other monuments or gardens that sort of lined this waterfront and the remnants of these have sort of disappeared. Uh, sometimes the footprints exist. In five or six cases, they are actual buildings or remnants, but they are completely erased from the imagination of the locals, but also from the tourism industry and the visitors who come to Agra. Besides the great Mughal architecture, during the British colonial rule, a number of these sites, some of which were these historic garden sites, were converted into industrial sites, which then in the last 20 years have been abandoned. And you see some remnants of industries, chimneys, parts of factories, but on prime waterfront sites. And this holds amazing potential to also, in a sense, capture and surface different layers of history in Agra, which is the Mughal history, or maybe the pre-Mughal history, the Mughal history, and the colonial history. And so these are very exciting sites and hold great promise for potential exercises and reimagining them for the future. The studio was titled Planning for Conservation. The agenda here was to really fold conservation back into the debate about planning, to see conservation as but one instrument of planning and the detachment of preservation, conservation, the kind of narratives that are developed around it, take it too far away from planning for it to be effective. And so in the end, we have a situation where monuments are isolated from their context, from the communities to which they belong. And this is highly problematic for the conservation process. The site that we sort of uh, designated was the six kilometers of the original historic garden waterfront. And the students were challenged to come up with strategies that would not only surface these cultural memories, but also ways in which the communities that are adjacent to these historic sites can actually benefit from a restoration project like this. The aim is really to then construct a narrative which can catch the imagination of tourists and which could make for itineraries that allow people or encourage people uh, or excite people to spend more time in Agra, which we feel, of course, will directly and indirectly benefit the economy of the city. The way the studio was structured was we spent about four weeks doing research in Agra to prepare the students uh, for the trip. We spent about eight or nine days on the ground and this was very important because uh, the fieldwork involved not only visiting the great monuments of Agra but also meeting with activists who work with communities, going into the communities and trying to get a pulse of what these places were about but also what the relationship was and how these communities perceived their relationship to this heritage landscape that sort of surrounded them in a sense. And what we did was we, for five days of the eight days, we orchestrated these trips. We went to different monuments, I mean really traversed the entire landscape and then the remaining the remaining three days, the students were allowed to explore on their own. And it was very interesting. They broke up into small groups, sometimes individually. They walked over infrastructure. They walked in interstitial spaces in the city. They traversed the open drainage channels to get a sense of the problems of sanitation. They walked into communities and interviewed people. And so I think this kind of deep dive, in a sense, both in a way that it was orchestrated, but also allowing this kind of independence is I think a great way to not only let students understand the landscape, but also for students to then bring multiple perceptions to the problem as we discuss this as a group. 
One of the important components of this format of the Extreme Urbanism Studios is also to do a one-day workshop on the ground with the actors involved, the constituencies that might be important. And in Agra, we did a one-day workshop which the Archaeological Survey of India organized. And for the students, this is important because they hear then firsthand the perceptions of the authorities in charge of these monuments. And they learn a lot from that because not only are the interactions enriching, but it is a pulse that they manage to discern on the ground, which I think really facilitates their learning process and understanding of the situation. Then the next stage was coming back, synthesizing this, and the students, based on their trip, formulated projects which were very specific. We tried not to focus on the monument itself. There's a lot of capacity to conserve the physical fabric of the monument, but what we instead chose to do was to look at the communities that were adjacent to these monuments, because really the future of these monuments depends on the future of the landscape they're situated in. I mean, the future of the Taj Mahal depends on the future of Agra. What's, I think, unique in the GSD about the structure of this studio is that it embraces people, students, professionals beyond the 12 students that are allocated to the studio. And the Loeb Fellowship is a very important component of the studio where the Loeb's travel with us on the studio trip. They become explicitly or implicitly mentors to the students. Uh, they become sounding boards and they participate in reviews and pin up. So this multiplicity of voices is actually incredibly enriching as pedagogy, but it's also an amazing experience for the students who I think learn then how to synthesize multiple perspectives and viewpoints. You know, for complex problems like looking at the city of Agra, I think it really involves truly interdisciplinary approach in some ways because naturally the issues of conservation are quite central uh, to the discussion, but also landscape, architecture, urban design, urban planning. So besides the Loeb Fellowship, this year for the first time we also made this a field trip for the critical conservation students of the MDES track uh, who specialize in conservation and that sort of added uh, interesting perspective because they are beginning to theorize in very particular ways what conservation might mean in a context. And the studio students and the designers benefited a great deal from this kind of theoretical perspective uh, that they brought to bear. This is naturally a GSD studio, but we had interesting patrons uh, that supported it. Uh, the South Asia Institute uh, supported the studio, so did uh, the Aga Khan programs at the GSD and at Harvard University more broadly, and the World Monument Fund, who was actually working on the ground in Agra. So besides support, which was of course financial, air trips, etc., uh, these networks also connected us to people. They employ people they consult with on the ground, and this ranged from experts in preservation, experts on Mughal garden histories, activists uh, who work on the ground with communities, and this gave us great access to an entire spectrum of actors on the ground, ranging from the Archaeological Survey, the Agra Development Authority, community activists, people in these communities, uh, and that I think really adds for an incredibly rich experience for everyone who goes on these field visits.